Thank you. Larry, before you leave, would you close that door? Good morning. Good morning. Oh, what a beautiful day, eh? Especially after our nice, cool day, refreshing yesterday. I got so much done. That was wonderful. So I loved, loved it, loved it. Thank you, God. <laughs> hey, we've got a lot of announcements. I'm going to start by inviting Cheryl up um, to speak to us just for a minute. So she said it was a minute. I don't know. It's maybe last. <laughs> Good morning. Barbara Jenkins is ill and could not be here today, so we'll certainly keep her in our prayers. But she asked, um, I announced for her, great news received this week. Calm notified Barbara that our stated supply uh, pastor position was approved and it was listed, posted in the ministerial um, website, job site. So, and it is on the job site. It's very exciting. So God is definitely directing us in steps to um, fill our pastor position. Oh, I'm sorry. You couldn't hear any of that? Oh, I'm so very sorry. <laughs> Barbara Jenkins is ill today, and we'll certainly keep her in prayer. She asked that I announce, though, on behalf of um, the personnel committee, the session, her clerk of session, that she received great news today, or Thursday actually, from Calm, that our stated supply pastor position was approved by Calm and listed on their website. So that's a big step for us to commission on ministry. So that's a big step for us to proceed with um, getting our stated supply pastor for our church. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about who he's preparing for us. It'll be somebody special because we require somebody special because we're special, right? <laughs> um, okay, so that's good news. We're posted. Now we'll see what happens from here. Uh, let's take a look at our what's going to happen this coming week. On Monday, we are starting the new uh, Bible study, morning, um, the Monday morning Bible study, and it's in Spiritual Classics. We will be looking at, for this Monday, the introduction and the section on Thomas More. So um, it's a short read, but it's good. It's really good stuff. So if you don't have a book, come see me. If you want to be on the Zoom link or you want to meet with us, an uh, in-person meeting are, uh, is happening in the ALC, which is that last room on the end. Um, if you're on Zoom, I'll send you the Zoom link if you let me know. So you at home? Yeah. I'm going to interrupt myself. I want you folks to all pat yourself on the back. You don't have COVID, apparently. So good job. <laughs> it is rampant out there. So nice job. Uh, those of you at home, just get well, okay, if you're there because you're sick. Uh, if you're there because you're not here, that's okay. But, um, Tuesday is Joy Group. So that's at 10 o'clock. That's always fun. Next Sunday is, I believe that's the 24th, and so that does include session next week, correct? I'm right on that? At noon. And, uh, but before that, tomorrow is, boy, if you get, guys get out of here with your minds intact, you're, you've done well. So tomorrow, our committee meetings, faith committee at 3.30, stewardship at 5, communication at 6, fellowship committee is not meeting in July. Then on the 20th, there is no Presbyterian women meeting. Okay. And July 24th is session again. And on the 27th, the Presbyterian women are doing the craft day at 9 o'clock. And I assume that's at Wilma's. Right? right. <laughs> Any other announcements? I just want to thank everybody who in this congregation who is stepping up to the plate to help us
through this transition period. I, d I just am so proud of all of you for, yes, Marilyn, I agree. It's a lot. We find out somebody's sick, other people jump in to take their place. Nobody's yelling at anybody. I'm just loving you so much. I'm so proud of you. Just keep that up. Okay, let's bow our heads and bring these people and those that uh, we haven't spoken of to God. Heavenly Father, you know, you know what each one of these precious people needs. You know if it's health, you know if it's sinfulness, you know if it's trials and tribulations, you know if, if it's devastation, you know if it's praise. And we know that you are there with them. Help them to feel you, to feel your spirit surround them with your love, with your peace, with your patience, with your health, with your goodness, and help us to reach out in any way we can to administer to your precious people. God, you are so gracious to us. Help us to reach out and be gracious to those around us. Bless them. Hold them close, O oh God. And this and we ask in your son's name. Amen. Oh, thank you, God, for rock and your patience. Oh, my goodness. And I'm going to throw it even further because we're not doing the scripture right now. So be ready for not a scripture, okay? Would you join me in prayer? God, guide our thoughts. Help us to know you. Help us to reach out to you so that you are in our lives at all times and that we know it. Thank you, God. Amen. We are going to do a scripture, but it's coming later. So don't worry. Um, during my chaplaincy work at River Bend, I met a couple who had an experience that correlated with an event that occurred to me. In ICU, there was a couple, um, the husband was dying, and um, I was standing with his wife at his bedside, and I asked her to tell me their story. It was a sweet love story, um, but it had a couple of umps in it. And the one that caught my attention was the one that occurred three years previous to this incident uh, where the wife and I were together with her husband. He had died three years ago. They did bring him back, but he was um, dead so long that he was wheelchair bound. His personality, his... Um, intellectual capacity was basically still there. So they, they had three neat years where he got to see his youngest child married and they had a blessed time. But they knew because the first death experience was so significant that he wouldn't have a long life. So they tried to pile as much as they could into those three years and she was very joyful about it. The interesting thing about that extended first death was that when he came back, he remembered it. And he remembered the death experience as not being fearful. He felt like he was um, safe and that he was actually alive in his death. And he promised her, when his eventual death did come, that he would come back in by bringing her gifts 
things that she could find that would tell her that he was okay and that he still loved her. She was, of course, very sad that her dear husband was dying, but the joy in her eyes to have something to look forward to was precious. She, um, so often when we lose somebody significant in our lives, we tend to spend so much time in the past looking back to, from where we were. And she now was looking forward to finding the treasures that he was leaving her. Now, my story has three parts, and you have to know the first two parts before you can hear the third part so that you understand the correlation. Number one, when my mom died, of course I felt grief, but I had a, um, some real guilt in that too because the last weekend of mom's coherent life, I was mad at her. And so to lose her uh, while I was angry was really hard, and it made me so upset with myself because she and I had had a wonderful relationship, and I have, was always glad that she was my mom. So to say that final goodbye with that kind of guilt really upset me. And I wanted so bad to have one more day with her where I could tell her how much I loved her and how proud I was of her. So that's story one. Story two was that she lost her mom in, when her mom died, she too felt guilty because she never had as close a relationship with her mom as she did with her dad. And so, and her mom died first. So she felt like she didn't get that satisfaction of having a wonderful, loving relationship with her mom that she did with her dad. So there, there's the two stories, okay? Right after mom died, oh, third part of the story. <laughs> Yeah. I have two plants. They are, um, there's a green variety, it's a vine, and the other one is a variegated leaf, which means it's got green and white in it. And for those of you who know plants, it's, it's a Hoya, they're both Hoyas. And I remembered way back when, before Granny died, that she, I went over to visit, and she was so excited. She was so excited. Come look, come look, come look. She had had these two vines that I now have, and it was the first time it had bloomed. Now, the bloom of a Hoya is very different than any other kind of plant. It looks like little tiny wax blossoms. They're little pinky things, and they got a darker pink center, but it's a little cluster of these little waxy looking things. And they have kind of a sweet little aroma, precious. But the joy that Granny experienced when that thing bloomed, because she had watered it and loved it and loved it and watered it and it wouldn't bloom. And finally it did and she was so excited. So, okay, so you got those background pieces. So right after mom died, my two Hoyas, which had never bloomed, bloomed. The green one bloomed and the variegated one bloomed. First time ever. To me, it was such a clear message. Mom and Granny were telling me, we're good, we're okay, and we love you. Mom saying to me, we're cool, babe. I love you, you love me, and I know that. Everything else is wasted time and energy. Let it go. Here we were, two different groups of people, experiencing treasures and gifts from the beyond. But there's an important essential element to both these stories. You have to know each other to get the value of the treasure. 
The rest of my family, when I told them the story of the Hoyas, they said, oh, isn't that sweet? They didn't get it. They, did, they weren't there when I saw Granny's face, when she saw that blossom. They weren't in me to know the guilt I felt about Mom's death at that time. I mean, they'd heard it, but they didn't know what I was feeling. They didn't know how important those blossoms on that plant were. And it's the same with the couple. That woman said to me, I know I will find treasures from him. Maybe it will be a dime on the sidewalk with the year of the day we got married. Or maybe it'll be something else. But they have to know each other, don't they? She has to know him well enough to recognize his gift. And he has to know her well enough to know what gifts will mean something to her. Right? That's also how it is with God and us. God is giving us Gifts all the time. All the time. He started by giving you life. And he just added family members to you. He's giving you beauty in this world creation. He's giving us the ability to appreciate those things. But there's even more that he's giving us. It's that we may or may not know what we're looking at. So how do we know God well enough? Because he's pretty vast. He's big. I mean, I don't know if the... Have you seen the, the latest pictures of the universe from that, new, that telescope? They are spectacular, but it makes our... Oh, our little world so stinky. And we're just dinky on this little dinky world. He's big. And it's hard to know how to know him fully enough to recognize his gifts. Except now. Let's go to scripture and see how can we learn about this vast, amazing God who is leaving us treasures all over the place. John 14, 1 through 21. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. I forgot to tell you this is Jesus talking to his disciples. This is very close to the end of his life on earth. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, You would know my Father as well. Underline that in your minds. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. And from now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. 
And I will do whatever you ask. I want you to circle those words. You ask in my name so that the Son may, be, may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me, circle those words, anything in my name and I will do it. If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. Underline those words. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you an orphan. I will come to you. Before long the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realize that I am in the Father Underline this, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. How do we know the Father who is so vast and overwhelming? We know him because we know the Son. We can read about him in our Bibles. We can study him in our Bible studies. We can learn about him in reading about him. But those words that I wanted you to circle, he asks you to ask him for things, implying that he wants us to talk with him, to have conversation with him, to discuss things with him, to ask for things, yes, but also to listen. A conversation. He's asking for us to do those things because he wants us involved with him and him with us. So we can learn more about him by talking to him. Isn't it interesting? Do you remember pre-caller ID? You could answer the phone and the person would say hello and you knew who that person was if you had spent time with them, isn't it amazing what the mind can do? That memory, you could tell the texture of the voice, the intonations of the voice, the vibrations in the voice, and you could tell who it was. Now, you couldn't do that with people you didn't know, right? So if we want to know God's voice, we need to talk with him enough to recognize it, right? When he speaks to us, we want to know that that's him. And the only way, I'm sorry, folks, the only way you can know him and know his voice is to talk with him and to listen to him. That's it. There ain't any other way. Okay? Then, if you really want to see his treasures, you got to look for him. you got to be opening your eyes and your mind to that God that you are becoming acquainted with and knowing he sent that for me because I needed that. Right then I needed that and he sent it to me. But you don't recognize it unless you know him. And he knows you pretty well. But you still have to recognize it. Okay? During COVID... I, like you, spent a lot of time by myself. And I saw treasures God gave me that are beyond, beyond, beyond. I was so full of joy. I'm not kidding. There was a cliff rock. I mean, cliff rock, right? And there is a tree who found a little patch of dirt and wanted to grow in that rock face. And it grew straight out of that rock face because seeds just kind of do that thing. They just kind of grow out of their seed. And this went out, but as soon as it got past the shade of the top of the cliff, it saw the light and went whoop, straight up to the light. It was growing like that, and then it grew like that because it wanted the light, because it knew it needed that, that godness to be truly strong. I was so impressed. 
I said, God, that's cool. That's way cool, God. I was walking along a side, um, well, it was actually an old street, but, oh, it was hot. It was dry. And there was this crack. And there a tiny little blue flower growing out of that. And I thought, isn't that amazing? It has so much life in it. It wants to shout its joyfulness to God by coming out of nothing. I mean, who would want to grow in a piece of old pavement, right? But it did because it felt the God life in it. What a treasure God gave me that day. There was another day I was walking along and I saw the little baby duckies with their mama ducky and they were all quacking and they were swimming. And I thought, okay, I am in the midst of this COVID thing. People are dying everywhere and yet God is showing me life goes on. Life goes on. After COVID kind of calmed down a little bit, I actually went to a grocery store and I saw this precious, precious daddy with a weeping little boy in his cart. And I thought, oh my, what a day they have had. And the daddy bent over and kissed that precious little people on the head. And I thought he probably wanted to strangle the little knothead, you know. But he kissed him instead. Another day, I saw a clerk who was frazzled. I mean, you could tell that she was frazzled. And the, the poor little old lady in front of me, old, she's probably younger than me, but no, was having trouble getting the card to work. Have you ever had that happen? And... Let me help you. They are so difficult sometimes. And it was so sweet. This love that I'm seeing in this frantic, frazzled, COVID-ridden, death-ridden world. Gifts from the Father. Showing me love over and over again. And I got so full of joy because I was thanking God for these gifts. I was acknowledging that these gifts were given to me from God. I was praising God. And as I said earlier, God inhabits praise. God was in me because of the praise I was giving him. We are praising him together today. We praise him. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Glory be to the Father. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Right? We praise Him in our services. I hope, I hope that when you sing those words, your heart shouts to the God who gave you life and has given you gifts. And not just... Oh, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Okay, now I can sit down. You know, we can do this differently, folks. If we want God in our lives, we praise Him. And He asks us to ask Him for things. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He asks us. He taught us that. He asks us to be a partner with him, to share with him. Well, I was full. I was full to here with this joy, and I needed an outlet. I needed to share this with somebody. Do you remember that song we sang last week? It only takes a spark to get a fire going. And soon all those around can warm up in the going. That's how it is with God's love. You want to experience it. You want to share it. And I wanted to share it. And I came to Seth finally when we could be sort of human together. And I said, Seth, I've got to find somebody 
who wants to share the treasures that God has given them with me so I can share the treasures God has given to me because it is so important that I get this out. The joy of having God's love in my life is so overwhelming. I've got to share it. Can, do you know anybody? He said, yeah, I do. Said, Seth said, and I have a dream. I want this praying church, this church that's known for prayers, to be completely filled with prayer. And I'd like for it to go out into the community. And he said, would you do an experiment with Marilyn and I? Would you do this prayer triad thing with me? And I'll tell you what. That was an amazing year, wasn't it, Marilyn? We, we prayed together most once a week, the three of us. And what was in, amazing was that not only did we share the joys and the treasures that we had in life, but sometimes my mind was so cloudy or foggy I couldn't see the treasure and Seth and Marilyn could see it clear as day and help me to see it or vice versa. We brought our prayers to each other. I'm really worried about this. Will you pray for me? And it was truly miraculous how many of those prayers were answered in this year time. I invite you. Marilyn and I now are, are thirdless. It's called prayer triad. So, so we don't have that third person, but we would like to invite any of you who want to know, and this is for you at home too, any of you who want to have more of God's joy in your life, who want to see the treasures that God has given you, to know him better, to participate in a prayer triad. It can be three, it can be two, because we know Jesus says, two or more of you are gathered together, there will I be also. It can be four. You don't want too many because then you get, you'd be there. One time, I know for sure we were there for three hours. We were so enmeshed in our discussion about God's love for us. But I invite you to join us. And um, there's, it's pretty easy. There's a little scripture. You read it. You study about it. You look at it. And then you give your prayer requests. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a wonderful, wonderful way to learn and see the treasures that God has for you and the joy that he wants to fill you up with. I hope that you'll join us. I have to admit, last night I had a dream. Marilyn, you'd be impressed. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> We had probably 50 people come wanting to sign up to be a part of the prayer triad. And they were people in our church. They were people in our community. They were people in your families. I believe this is a way for us to grow closer and closer to the God who made you and made you good and wants you to have a good life with him. Doesn't mean it's perfect, does it? But he wants you to have treasure. I don't know what's next. Does anybody else know what's next? Rock, do you know what's next? <laughs> Affirmation of faith. Affirmation of faith. Thank you. I needed that. Would you join me, please? In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death, 
can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you are merciful to us and we thank you for loving us so much that we want that you want us to feel your love, to know that we are loved by you. Hold us fast, keep us strong, and may we reach out to you and to each other in your holy love. Amen.